Throughout F1's history, there have been plenty of stellar seasons, but which was the most exciting? You might say 2021, 12 or even 07, but only one season had them all wrapped into one. For that story, we need to wind the clock back to when Prost claimed his second title in 1986. To fully understand what went on, we need to go back even further to 1985. Nelson Piquet, by then a double world champion, left Brabham to join Williams, and naturally he expected to be given number one status. This was a good move. Brabham were in terminal decline, while towards the end of that season, Williams took three wins in a row and seemingly had a car to compete with McLaren. But when Frank Williams suffered a horrific accident, the team was left in the hands of Patrick Head. The season couldn't have started off better for the Brazilian, winning at his home race to raise the morale of a team that had nearly lost its leader. At the following round in Spain, Senna would again edge out Mansell, this time by the smallest of margins, but PK then failed to score. Prost, who'd barely even figured by that stage, thrust himself into title contention by taking two consecutive wins. It seemed as though, with a quarter of the season gone, order had been restored at least as far as McLaren were concerned. At Brabham, however, this was far from the case. While testing at Paul Rica, a rear wing failure cost Elio De Angelis his life. The marshals, unfortunately, reacted too late and he inhaled toxic fumes, which sadly cost him his life. Somewhat fittingly, it was Mansell, a former teammate of Elio's, who'd go on to win in Belgium. It only came about after PK had retired from the lead, which angered the Brazilian substantially. Crucially though, it gave Mansell the momentum he needed. The year wore on with Mansell and Prost always in contention. PK on the other hand started to fall back, and by Brandt's hatch, Mansell's home race, he desperately needed a win. At the start, he got away well while Mansell fell back with a mechanical issue but a crash behind them brought the red flags out. This meant that Mansell had to race in the spare car, which was set up for PK. The Williams spare disappeared into the distance, with PK leading Mansell, but under pressure from his teammate, PK missed the gear, costing him the lead and the win, and as they walked onto the podium after the race, Nelson refused to shake Nigel's hand. That defeat seemed to kick PK into gear, and after taking a pair of wins in Germany and Hungary, even lapping his teammate round the Hungaro ring, he stood only 8 points off the championship lead. The fallout from Hungary though was cataclysmic. PK there had a new differential and he neglected to inform his colleague. The Brazilian knew a lot of tricks about setting up a car, but not telling his teammate would have been a new trick. It was also the first time since Brazil that Prost had failed to score a point. Over the next three races, Prost, Mansell and PK traded wins and bad luck in equal measure. But then, it was time for everyone to head to Mexico. And Prost and PK had a problem. They were over 9 points behind. And at a time where only 9 points were given for a win, it meant that only luck could prevent Mansell from winning the title. And that was when fate played its hand. Nigel started in fourth, which was exactly what he needed to win the title only for him to botch the start, leaving him dead last. It left PK leading until a suspension issue dropped him to fourth, just ahead of Mansell, who dearly have wanted his teammate to move over. As it was, he didn't. Gerhard Berger would take his first win, while Prost took an important second place, so that with just one race remaining, the standings looked like this. When F1 arrived at Australia, for Prost and PK, the situation was clear. Win, and hope that Mansell finished in 6th. For Prost, this was bad news, as he'd been lapped several times by the Williams pair all year. So, the McLaren team hatched a plan. Rosberg would go flat out, forcing PK and Mansell to run quicker than they needed to. McLaren reckoned it would wear the Williams driver's tires out quicker. Over at Williams, they planned to go the distance without making a tyre stop, which was exactly the opposite of what Prost intended to do. The Frenchman's plans looked to have gone out of the window when he suffered a puncture. 
In reality, the mishap only disguised his team's plan to make a stop. But by lap 63, it was his teammate's turn to suffer a puncture, which promoted Mansell into a title winning position. Then, That left PK in the lead and on course for his third world championship, but Williams elected to play it safe and they brought him in for a new set of tires. Amidst all the chaos, Prost would sneak his way into the lead and though the Brazilian gave chase, closing the gap from 15 seconds down to 4, the title had gone French. Prost stood in disbelief as he ran out of fuel once he crossed the finish line, barely even able to wrap his head around his achievement. Le Professeur capitalized on Williams' interteam rivalry, and while it was McLaren that profited in 86, they failed to learn their lesson, as 21 years later, it was their own drivers that lost the championship because of their bickering. There were only a handful of seasons that would go on to shape the F1 we know and love today. 1986 was one of those seasons, effectively rupturing the Williams-Honda-PK partnership for good, while also paving the way for PK to join Lotus. Honda also decided to ditch Williams for McLaren a year later. PK's reputation took a massive dent, while inversely, Mansell's reputation would go on to flourish. Above all else, it cemented Prost's position as one of the all-time greats, having become only the first driver to successfully defend his title since Jack Brabham in 1960. Anyway, that's it for today's video. For more videos like this one, where we take a deep dive into historical moments of Formula 1, be sure to check out this next one.